Did you know that in 2016, there was a series called The Outsiders that centered around a family up in Kentucky in the Appalachian Mountains who were in a fight for their life against the coal mining companies that wanted to destroy the mountain they lived on. And in this series, they talked about how the people who had been squatting there didn't actually have deeds to the land, even though their family had been there for generations. So my question to all of you is, how many people do you think have actual deeds to the property that their families have been on for the past 250 years up in those Appalachian Mountains? And on top of that, I know everybody has heard about the new lithium and quartz deposits found right underneath where the hurricane devastated everybody's lives. But it gets so much more interesting, folks. Did you know that people have been taking their own personal helicopters up there to rescue people? And that the local government and police departments are threatening to arrest them. There are also people and sheriffs angry that people are trying to feed people. Now, I would never make any of these statements unless I had proof and not just a little proof. I'm talking a whole lot of proof, folks. So I hope that you stay with me over the next several minutes as I break down for you what is happening up in the eastern part of the United States. My name is Samantha. I am an owner and operator of a two acre farmstead located in Southeast Louisiana. And this is near and dear to my heart. One, because I love America. Two, because I love Jesus. But three, because I lived through a very similar storm in 2016 and I understand what it's like to be in a no flood zone and then turn around and have 12 foot of water swing in in three hours on top of you. And you take 48 hours to get out of there and you have to rescue yourself because guess what? Nobody's coming to rescue you. So let's start with the beginning of the video, The Outsiders. So this was a two-part series, had two seasons, and it broke down what was happening up in the Appalachian Mountains. Now, the really interesting thing about this series is the fact that this has happened in America multiple times. It's not a movie. It is actually real life. You have what happened up on Ruby Ridge, and Waco, regardless of what you were told by mainstream media, our government really never had the right to interfere with either of those groups of people. They just didn't. And why should you even care? Because if they'll do it to them, folks, they'll do it to you. Now, in the series, The Outsiders, some of the things that this mining company did to get those people off the mountain was drop chemicals from helicopters. I remember watching that part. It was horrific. Burned all the crops, made all the people sick. They poisoned their natural water wells. They had the local police and the mining company go in and barricade the mountain so that these people, the ferals, were trapped on the mountain and couldn't come down into town for the few supplies they actually needed that they didn't make themselves. So I want you to just think about that and what's going on right now in the Appalachian Mountains. Now let's talk about the gentleman who is not only, only ex-military, trained in law enforcement and a pilot. Let's hear his story out of his own mouth. And, and try to help today and his, his response was, there's so many messages, I, I don't think we can't not go help. Sinem and his son were headed up to Black Mountain. Flight tracking shows no flight restrictions in place Saturday or Sunday morning when Sidham flew through the Lake Lure Gap. But that was all about to change. The Sidham spotted an older couple waving for help, then landed in what's left of their driveway. Hey, I want you to uh, let me get in. You step out and go out, help her in, put her bag in the back, get her strapped in. I'm going to take her down, come back. I'll take him, I'll come back, and then I'll get you, okay? I originally left my son co-pilot on the side of the mountain. It was, it, it was kind of unstable, so I didn't want to put more weight in the helicopter to lift back off. So I left my son with the other victim, and, and I was just going to take one person down at the time. And, and you could hear me in the video talking through with the victims and with my son what we were going to do. Three minutes away, Sidham spotted a group of rescuers just down the river. He landed and found someone in charge. I told him my, uh, my background experience, law enforcement, uh, firefighting, uh, pilot. He immediately started uh, helping with coordination. He, he gave me radio frequencies to coordinate with them on, um, set up a landing area for me to come back with the uh, other victim. And in the uh, middle of the whole conversation and, and then blocking the road off, I was greeted by the uh, 
at that time I didn't know, but Lake Lure fire chief or assistant chief maybe, and he shut down the whole operation. So at, at that point there was, I felt like the conversation wasn't going any further. And again, he asked me to leave and, and, and I said, hey, I have no problem getting out of your area. If that's what you want us to do, we'll, we'll leave, no issue. At that point I asked him, you know, what was the reason I had to leave them there? And, and he said, again, you're interfering with my operation. I, I just need you to get out of the area. I said, sir, I'm, I don't know where you were trained at, but I know how my training is and I'm not going to leave personnel behind. I'm, I'm going back to get my co-pilot. He said, if you turn around and go back up the mountain, you're going to be arrested. I said, well, sir, I'm, I'm going back to get my co-pilot. I, I don't know what to tell you. And he said, I'm, I'm letting you know. And at that point, he waved for two law enforcement officers to come over and told me that again, if I go back up the mountain, I would be arrested. He flew the three minute trip back, picked up his son and left the woman's husband behind. I'm sure he was flooded with emotions and, and trying to rescue other people. And I, I just felt that it was best at the time to leave. So I did follow his instructions and I ha had a conversation with the female victim before I left, apologizing and explaining. She, she was standing there, she heard the whole conversation and um, they were both very, very surprised, very upset. The husband, as I was leaving off of the side of the mountain, at that point, separated from his wife, he was, he was upset. I can only imagine. Sidham and his nearly 1,400 flight hours turned his chopper around and headed back to South Carolina, passing people waving for help along the way. As I was actually leaving to go back to get my son, the original chief or, or captain that I spoke to, uh, his crew and, and himself, they, they came back over and said, hey man, we, we can't tell you to go get the victim. We can't even ask you to go get the victim, but we can tell you if you come back with the victim, we'll have you a designated landing spot and, and they, they won't, we'll make sure they don't come over here. So there was no flight restriction when you went in? No, no, no. flight restriction when I went in. Uh, it, it went in place 20 or 30 minutes after the confronta confrontation with uh, Mr. You feel like that was coincidental or, or do you think that that was because of what happened? I don't think it can be coincidental when there has not been one in place the day before doing rescue operations, the night of, the morning of, that took place after our altercation. I, I think there would have never been a uh, TFR put in place had we not had that conversation. If I had to do it over again, I, I would have stopped and I would have rescued as many people and, until they decided they were going to arrest me. Well, for now, we've chosen not to name that Lake Lure fire official because communications in and out of that town are still difficult. We want to include his side in this story, and if and when he responds to our messages, we will include that. All I could think of were my parents, Papa Sammy and my mother, and, you know, my dad, after 62, 63 years of marriage, would have put my mother on that helicopter first. But if you'd have returned and told him he was now separated from her, what? Can you guys imagine what these people are going through? And then when good-hearted Americans on their own dollar and their own time come in to help you, you have those two gentlemen. You did notice we put their pictures, right? You have people like that refusing to allow trained people to help. Now, I know what you're going to say. Maybe... He shouldn't have been up there. Maybe he's going to cause more harm than good. And those are all valid points, folks. But you heard him tell you his credentials. He checked to make sure it was legal and okay. And they told him, get off our mountain. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry. I was rescued by what became the Cajun Navy. See, the Cajun Navy became a thing in 2016, if you don't know. And it became a thing because of the Great Flood. They, we, the Louisiana people, had to rescue ourselves. I mean, I know y'all probably thinking, come on, lady, we're talking about Appalachian Mountain. It's two different things. But folks, it's not. It's not. History repeats itself. We had to save ourselves. <laughs> There was no infrastructure. The water came in places that have never flooded in all of history, took out police departments. It took out fire and rescue. We didn't have enough boats. We didn't have enough rescuers. And do you want to know what the Cajun people of Louisiana did? We saved ourselves. And from that, the Cajun Navy became a thing. And now we go around the country and we help save everybody else. So you never turn away somebody willing to help, okay? Never. You never. It's like that story. I know a lot of you have heard it where the, 
the person says, God, why didn't you save me? I, I prayed that you would save me. And they're like, I sent a boat. You told them to leave. I sent a car. You told them, no, thank you. It's that mentality. You don't turn away a helicopter pilot who is trained in rescue when you have elderly people and babies trapped on mountains. Folks, you do not do it, but it gets worse. Because not only that, you have sheriffs getting angry because somebody cooked food for people in the hurricane who were hungry. Watch. I have authority yet. Why can't we rent this? Okay. You don't have the authority yet. It's that simple. That's what I'm going to say. No. When was that filed? I didn't ask you. I'm not talking to you. You need to move away from me. You are a disgrace in my eyes. Did, ditto, ditto, brother. You know what? As a Marine, you should have been better prepared. Jump in my shit and see what happens. I am. As a Marine, you should have been I'm better right prepared. In your shit. As a Marine, you okay. should have been better prepared. You don't come to me and tell me I'm a piece of shit for you pointing are. out the truth. You for pointing out the truth. I think a lot of people in the city feel the chief should be removed. I will not back down. I stand by what I see. You think you lost your temper, or you think so that's... the most information I could find on this clip, it looks like there was either a vote or some kind of runoff and the old sheriff lost and the new one won and he rented a place prepared food and was going to feed hurricane victims because he felt like the sheriff had not done his job the sheriff was not prepared and the old sheriff got furious and blocked it and you're going to see that happen from town to town to town during this storm Watch as the stories come out. When you see these politicians, because that's what he really is, lose their temper because they were not prepared for what happened, folks, I'm telling you now, vote them out. Don't ever forget that they denied your people relief of any type. Can I tell you what I find suspicious as shit? That one of the areas affected by Hurricane Helene is the world's largest lithium deposit and the DOD just entered into an agreement with this company right here to mine lithium for electric cars starting in 2025. Now that area is completely devastated. This is a $90 million agreement between the DOD and this company right here to get Kings Mountain, North Carolina lithium mine up and running by 2030. If that area has been inundated, is in a disaster zone, then the government can come in and do eminent domain and they can pay you what it was worth five years ago rather than what it's worth right now. Imagine that your home has turned into a watery lot and the government comes to you and says, hey, I'll pay you what you paid for it. You're gonna take it and you're gonna go, right? What do you think's gonna happen right here now that they want this lithium mine up and running by 2025, 2030 at the latest? Back in 1947, we had the Florida Georgia hurricane or hurricane nine and it was the first hurricane to be targeted for weather modification. What happened was General Electric, the U.S. Navy, the Army, the Air Force, they poured dry ice into this hurricane using airplanes to see what would happen. Would they slow it down? Well, what happened was it slowed down a little bit, but it turned west really sharp. Let me show you. This is the path that the hurricane took in 1947. Does it look similar to you? Probably not. It's a coincidence, right? Moving on. I'm sure this is just another coincidence, but do you know who owns the most shares in that lithium mine? BlackRock and Vanguard. I decided to do some digging. So the first thing I find out is North Carolina has the richest deposits of lithium in the entire world. Yeah, lithium for like cars, batteries, all that. Then I find out they have the world's highest purity quartz deposits. And that quartz just so happens to be the world's supply for AI chips, microchips, and all kinds of stuff. We're talking a $530 billion industry. So this is where it gets interesting. So a company by the name of Piedmont Lithium is awaiting a state mining permit for a site in Northern Gaston County. And Gaston County is completely flooded right now. The project was awaiting zoning approval because they were getting backlash from the residents and also city officials. And this lithium mine they want would be the third largest producer of lithium in the world. And they made a deal with Tesla already. Now remember the quartz? So in Spruce Pine, North Carolina, right next to Ashland, they are wanting to expand their mines even larger. And the residents aren't having it either. Enter the floods. People, these are mountain towns. It rarely, if not ever, floods in the mountains. I would know I grew up in the mountains in Colorado, which means none of these people have flood insurance.
I mean, the media is saying biblical devastation in North Carolina, AKA like the worst thing that could happen. An image of weather radar data from Thursday night. It's showing the eye of Hurricane Helene as it was moving into Florida. In this blue mass, it's a bunch of birds and probably some insects too. Wildlife typically shows up as blue on these radar images. And it's actually pretty common for birds, and especially seabirds, to get stuck in the eye of a hurricane. That's where it's calm, and once the birds are inside, it's hard for them to escape. As I wrote in this article, people have been documenting this phenomenon since at least the 1800s. When the storm dies down, the birds return home, but they're often blown like hundreds of miles away. This is a map of where birds were blown off course by Helene. They're literally seabirds in Kentucky right now. So it's a cool phenomenon, but it's also probably... A pre-planned amount without seeing how much damage was done, without knowing how many people are homeless or their businesses are destroyed or possibly are dead. They gave them a pre-planned amount. But in the same month of September, we gave out $16 billion to Israel and Ukraine. I don't know. You tell me. Let's let's just run it down real fast. Starting at the beginning of September, all of these eastern states sent their National Guardsmen overseas. Okay? So Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Tennessee, well, Florida would be considered southern, but you know what I'm saying. All of them sent thousands of their native-born sons and daughters overseas. Now, where would you think that those National Guardsmen should be right now, folks, in their towns helping to rescue? Why? Because they're invested. That's the point of having a state National Guard group in your state. They know the back roads. They know the people. They know the environment. They can survive it. So you'd want people familiar with these mountains rescuing in the mountains, you would think. I mean, if I was president, that's what I would do. <sighs> Having said that, you heard about the lithium, you heard about the quartz, you know about the new Green New Deal, you've heard Biden say, build back better. He also just recently said, we will not leave until we're finished. That was his exact words, talking about the storm. Oh, don't worry, we'll not leave until we're finished. Finish what? Building us back better? Folks, Get out there and vote. If you have never been saved by the blood of Jesus, please let me introduce you to him. If you've never seen my video from drug addiction to debt-free living, please go watch it. It's a testimony to my Lord and Savior. But let me introduce you to the man who changed everything for my husband and I. His name is Jesus. It is so simple. Don't let religious devils keep you from knowing and having a relationship with the one human that ever lived that can save you. He's the only one. All you have to do is confess it with your mouth and believe it with your heart. You could rededicate your life today. You don't, if you've been saved, but you fell away, rededicate. Folks, it's not that difficult. All you have to say is, dear Heavenly Father, I asked Jesus into my heart. I asked him to forgive me for my sins and wash me white as snow. Lord, I know that he died on that cross for me that he was buried in a tomb. And three days later, he rose from the grave and is now sitting at your right hand, soon to return for his elect. Lord, I thank you for that. I ask you to fill me with the Holy Spirit and create in me a new creation. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, you need to join a church. You need to get a good Bible. And you need to ask the Holy Spirit to come live inside of you. When you get into that church, they're going to talk to you about baptism. Do whatever your pastor tells you to do. If you're in a, a Bible teaching church, you can't go wrong, folks. Look, I love y'all with all my heart. But you had better get prepared. Today is October 1st. Ports shut down across this great nation. If you're not stocked up, it's something called supply and demand, folks. And if you don't have it, somebody else is going to need it and there's not going to be enough. That's what supply is. So then demand comes in and prices go up. With everything America is facing right now, we are in deep trouble. And if we don't get Trump back in there, it's going to be worse.